Hi, I'm Mike Sikash here. I'm the owner and designer of the Tent Lab. Uh, this video is going to be about our Moonlight tents. Uh, and while most of our Moonlights have exactly the same features as the others, uh, this is going to be particularly about the Plus Series tents, which are our really roomy models. Uh, those three tents, the Moonlight 2 Plus, 3 Plus, and 4 Plus, are all essentially exactly the same tent, but in different widths. So the 2 Plus is just under 5 feet wide. The 3 plus is 6 feet wide and the 8 plus is 8 foot, so that's 8 by 8 for the 4. They all use the DAC PL 13.55 millimeter poles, which are a beast, and that's uh, part of the reason why this video is about this series of tents, is how to handle these things and putting the eye pole together especially, and then taking it apart. Okay, let's go set up some tents. So the first thing is you want a site that doesn't have dead branches or dead trees that might fall on your tent. Then you'd like to find a place that's smooth and not level, but maybe just slightly tilted so it doesn't puddle water. Um, you can have water flow under the tent, so if there's a little angle and the water flows under, that's great, uh, but you don't want it to actually form a puddle. All right, we've got our spot selected, obviously, and uh, there's very little wind so we don't have to uh, do much before we start setting the tent up. Uh, but I did want to remind people that if it's really at all windy, you need to have your anchors set up and ready to go because these are strong tents and strong tents make great kites. So your tent can very easily be blown bodily off into the forest if you don't anchor it down really well. Okay. Our tents have a unique feature, uh, which bears mentioning first. You want to put the poles together before you pull the tent out. Some tents, you just, you know, you lay the tent out and you pull the poles and you just start putting them in. Well, um, our tents, you need to set, get the eye pole assembled. And that means you can't do it when it's in the tent. Here's the poles, the stakes, the repair kit's also in there. Okay, here's one of our DAC poles. Okay, so first thing about these poles, uh, and this will be true for most high quality tent poles, is the tolerances that these joints use are incredibly tight. And when you think that they're making millions of tubes and joints per month in the factory, uh, you realize that this is just an amazing quality item that they can do this. But the, you don't let them snap together like pulling apart and whacking into each other because you can, they can damage themselves. You just hold them. I like uh, doing it straight up in the air outside because you can. Uh, the joints, uh, they are roughly the uh, four thousandths of an inch diameter difference. That's a, the width of an average human hair, so they're incredibly tight tolerance. That makes your poles nice and smooth when they arc. It also means, though, that you can't move that joint if it's flexed. So if it's flexed, I would have a very hard time either pushing it in or pulling it out. So it jams. It's been made to do that. It has to be loose for it to go in and out and that's really important because when it is aligned it comes out just really easily and that can happen as you're setting the tent up and you want to check to make sure your joints are fully engaged because if one starts to be flexed and it's just barely in you can blow out the edge okay the eye pole needs to be assembled before it can go in the tent Again, we just take these right up in the air. That's one. There's the hub. There's the other. Shot cord pulls it together. And we want this hub the other direction. Okay, so these poles go together. They're identical poles that go together this way. So that works like this. You take the open end of one of the arms goes onto the hub and now making taking care that it doesn't come part way apart 
you give it a little pressure and you walk over to the other end. This goes in your right hand, that will be important. And then you reach down and grab that, okay. So now I've got, I need to do this joint. This is where all the technique is. So you take it, you put it up against something solid. So that's solidly against the ground over there, not up in the air. So this will be in your right hand and you hold it like this and you walk it towards, you just let your body be the, the force that pushes it. You don't kind of lever it with your arms and it'll just slide right together. So do that again. Just, this is something even, even a kid can do if once they know how because I'm not using my arms, I'm not brute forcing it. This is the technique. Uh, when you're doing this, uh, highly recommend at this point that you feel the edges here. This, inside, this edge is out and this edge is in. So as you push it, it comes neutral and then the other way. So you can, by putting your fingers just like this, you can find that spot to undo it super easily. But your fingers have to be in just the right spot on the pole. And when you practice that, then you're golden. Everything else is dead easy. Okay, so that's ready to go in the tent. All right, so the poles are assembled and we're ready to lay the tent out. You might want to pull your stakes out and put them on the bag so that they don't doesn't blow away. Okay, um, I've put the tent in the opposite of the way you take it out. So I actually stuffed the poles in first, then the rain fly to take up the bottom, and then the tent to take up the upper part of the sack. So I did that originally. Uh, we don't really recommend rolling, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, not because it's bad, but because it's just a pain. Okay. Uh, let's put the uh, green pole in first this time, just because we can. Uh, on these tents, it doesn't matter if you put the green or the gold in first. On the uh, Moonlight 2 and the UL2, it does matter. And you put the gold pole in first, but not these. These can go either way. All right, I'm popping these into another DAC feature. You notice it's not coming out over there. That's because what we've got are ball ends on the poles. So there's a little socket fixture on the tent. And it just pops in. So this is the socket. Here's the ball end. And then you just pop one into the other. And the way that comes out is actually pretty easy. You take it and you twist. Uh, you don't just pull it straight off, you twist it off. Hey, while we're here at the end, uh, let me just show you what else is going on with this corner. Uh, this is the buckle that the rainfly will attach onto. And uh, it has a, a brake strength of uh, almost a couple hundred pounds. And then this is the, the adjuster for the stake loops. So the, our stake loops are on cord and it adjusts like this, out and in. So you actually have a, a full two feet of adjustability as to where this, this uh, loop for your tent stakes can be with our tents. Okay, let's go back. And then we have another DAC feature and this is a, called a swivel C and it pops onto this ring and then locks. So these two poles are now locked together. They can't slide. Uh, now you can set the anchors and stuff. So let's do that. We give you an assortment of tent stakes. So you'll always have a right size. Uh, this is pretty hard ground. So I'm gonna just use the small ones. That makes the uh, going in and out the easiest. I like to put the adjustment at about halfway 
if I've got a choice and grab a rock. So you put the V shape towards the tent. Oh God, this is hard ground. I'm not even gonna put that all the way in. And we do our loop technique. Then you do these and you do the top center. So you can step in through an open door and very easily get your top clips. Do your corners. You may not have seen these clips before. These are designed to clip directly onto the hub stud here, and they just go on like that, and they go off the same way. Tent gets tighter and tighter with each clip. That's why it's nice to do these before you go around. Okay, now I just go around the tent. Close the door so bugs don't get in. Okay, that tent is, is ready to, to use and put the fly on. Let's take a closer look at those corners. This little feature of being able to adjust where your, your stake goes is incredibly handy. Uh, you know, most tents, you know, it's just this little loop right up next to it. And if there's a rock there, you're screwed. But with this one, you can move it all the way out as far as here if you want, if you need to. So there's actually an area about this big. Anything in this area, you can put a stake and anchor that corner. And that's just incredibly helpful. This actually makes it also super easy to use rocks and sticks as anchors. You flip this through. So now it's just a big slip knot. Put your rocker stick in here. Pull it out. Grab a big old rock. And now you have a rock anchor. So if this was on slick rock or something, uh, you're still good to go. And it's so easy, so fast. It's arguably even faster than using a stake. All right, time to put the rain fly on. Uh, with the rain fly, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, probably the most important thing is to uh, figure out which side's down. And that's the coated side on this model. Now the thing that throws people sometimes is that our logo is actually silk screened on the underside. So it's a nice understated effect. So if you see a logo that's really black and backwards, what, did we get a second? No, this is just the inside of the tent. So you throw it on and you have some navigation to do. Uh, obviously this, it could be one. Those go right in the corners like this. Uh, most obvious navigation is the doors. So you notice got one here and you've got one there so they have a color coded a colored uh, different colored uh, flap so you can tell the other thing you can do is you can see that that's the top stripe so navigation is pretty easy uh, the one thing you need to do when you put these tents on they have velcro on the underside and I swear it's taken me years to not just clip the rain fly on and then go, oops, I forgot to do the Velcro. So 
This is the setup video. We do the Velcro as we do it. So each one of these gets Velcro. There's one in the top middle of each pole. There's one behind the side pullouts. Those go here. Okay, once they're on, you can start to clip. So what I do is I usually get one side going and then I just walk around the tent. Take the Velcro, flip it around. And now it just does that job right there. Now the reason for this is that the tent is much, much stronger in a wind with these Velcros done. I know that's sort of counterintuitive that it's something so easy should matter so much, but trust me, uh, this is the configuration we do them in the wind tunnel. We don't even, didn't even do guy lines on the wind tunnel, so all those 30 plus mile an hour winds that you see us making claims about are, are done with just these. And last but not least, they all just clip in. Uh, a very strange thing about our tents that you will come to enjoy greatly is we have adjustment on the buckles for the rainfly, but hardly any. And the reason is because you actually need zero, none. It's taken a lot of years of using these for me to to commit to that. But I swear, I've taken these tents down, well, even this exact tent, up and down, time after time. And it doesn't need adjustment. So you could, we could have done it so that it was, you know, a little loose and then you, you tighten it the one inch that you get. But I mean, just clip it. So you just pull and clip. And if you want, you can line the seams. Okay, vestibules. Again, it's adjustable, but there's a thing about vestibules that you probably need to know. Uh, first of all, they're just big triangles. So triangles can't adjust in, in sort of angle or size, really. They did, they're one shape. So when they pattern these tents, they have to make one, they have to decide one spot where the tension is perfect between all the panels. So that means you have exactly one place putting a tent stake where that is going to be true. Uh, well, if your ground doesn't let you put your tent stake there, if it comes up or if it comes down, you need to make sure that you adjust for that. And we actually uh, allow you to do that, unlike you know virtually everyone else. So we can actually have a stake that's really close or really far, and it allows you to get your vestibule perfect. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do that. I'm going to use a, a big rock. So again, we just flip it. Got our stick for the, the stop this time. Big rock. So you don't just put the, put the loop around the rock. You actually use something else and then use the rock. So it's the friction of the rock holding it there. That way there's very little actually trying to like roll the rock over and mess, mess things up. So you saw how fast that was. That was at least as fast as a tent stake. Do that in the back. Okay, that's part's done. And you can pile as many rocks on as you need. Um, in really high winds, I would really recommend some good rocks. Uh, okay, there's your vents. They have a zipper on the inside. You can get at it from outside. You can get at it from inside. You can fold it down. Like if it's just howling outside, you can close it and fold it down and water even if the rain is coming just right at it, isn't going to be able to be driven all the way up and into your vent. On the side, you've got the, the uh, windows, polyurethane windows, and one here. But we also have guy line pockets on every corner that have our Dyneema core guy lines, which are long and have this handy little 
adjuster on the end, right? There it is. So, uh, so one thing about guy lines, uh, you know, it's just tension. So this cord cannot help this tent, uh, can't prevent the tent from moving sideways. It can only help it from moving that way. So it's really important that it be pulling sort of outwards as much as possible. A stake down here does nothing. This whole thing just doesn't, it's not resisted at all. However, you put a stake over here, okay, or adjuster. So you take it, go in, around, and there it is. Tighten, loosen. And if you need extra security, if it's really windy, you can wrap it twice. Works great. Okay, so now that will actually prevent this from moving, and that's what makes it strong. Uh, we put them in little pouches so that they don't just dangle all over the place. So it comes pre-rigged, ready to go. All the uh, guy lines in the pouches. It comes with everything you need right out of the box. So before we take this tent down, let me show you tr my last trick here. It's probably not my last trick. Um, remember how we talked about how the, the angle on the front vestibules, on the vestibules, was really important uh, so that you didn't get floppiness going in the, in the tent. But I have a trick. Uh, because it's a, a trade-off with this one between top tension and side tension, what I like to do is I actually like to make the vestibule be a little bit top tight. And the reason for that is because I can then go over here and retighten the sides. So I'll just first. Oh. Probably bears mentioning that these little Velcro pieces, in particular the hook, are the reason why you don't wash your tent and your rain fly together because the hook Velcro can snag the netting and cause it to run. Okay, you'll notice I'm grabbing the center, the top center of the rainfly. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, we, there's a kind of a debate about whether tents should be uh, stuffed or rolled. And uh, we come down very strongly on the stuffed. Uh, the reason for that is it's faster, it's cleaner, it makes a smaller package. Uh, that certainly doesn't hurt the tent to stuff it. Uh, rolling it is kind of a pain. Uh, they do it at the factory because in a factory environment, you know, you get four people laying out something and, f and rolling it in. I mean, it's, it's faster and more efficient. Uh, and, you know, the customer gets an unwrinkled product, which I'm sure they like, but we like stuffing. Uh, but there is some technique to that. Um, now we could wait, do the poles, put the pole bag in first and then stuff, and that'd be stuffing the fly, then the tent. But we, we made this bag so that you can actually use the pole bag as a separate, and then the tent and fly by themselves would go in this. So I'm gonna just do that. So what you do is you grab the top center. So now everything, as I go in, air can leave the rain fly. It's most important to get the very bottom tight. That's where anybody who's having trouble stuffing, that's where you're going wrong. So if you take it, you put it between your legs here, between your feet, and you kind of cradle it. And you use your body weight to kind of mush it down as you go. You really concentrate, you rotate it, concentrate on getting that last bit done. Okay, so that's we're now ready for the tent. Okay. 
Okay, let's do the tent before we do the poles this time. That's always interesting. Okay, the tent stakes. Uh, you know, most people, their tent stakes are right up against the tent and they just grab the tent and pull the stakes out. Sometimes that works better than others. With these, you actually push away from the tent and it slides right out. Here's another technique you can use. Uh, you use one stake under the head edges of the other and yank it out that way. It gives you a lot more purchase. Okay, let's pack the tent into the bag. Okay, again, I want to get the center of things, so I'm going to just fold it once, grab this bottom center. So I grab it this way, and now air is all going to go out. Same deal. Grabbing it, pushing it rotating again using my hand kind of like this and using my body weight to just compress it as it goes okay so you can see this tent goes in quite a bit smaller than necessary and here's the second draw cord so that you can carry the tent and fly in a package that's kind of sized for a tent and a fly, and then you've got you got your pole bag to carry separately. Sometimes that's handy when you're divvying up the the goods. Okay, let's let's undo this eye pole. We talked about how it goes together, and now now we really can see how to take it apart it has everything to do with what we just learned. So I'm taking it, putting it up against a good solid stump. It's out of frame, but that's what it's up against. I've got my fingers, I'm feeling, and as I walk towards, I can feel it release. And right at that one point, it comes apart just like that. <laughs> There's a little bit of grit. But right at that one point, I can feel it. Like, that's too far. There's, an, there's a big edge on the inside, and it's flat on the outside. I want it to be right in the middle. What's interesting is the brain is a crazy thing. You can actually just sort of feel it. It's almost like it's part of your body when you do that. It's this, this so intuitive. You just have to know to, to feel for it. And once it's out, you flip it sideways. Do one end against the ground, then walk your pole, or, or, or perhaps call it and it will come. <laughs> and there's that and that. Okay. Um, take poles. There is some technique to folding poles. And the reason for that is actually really simple. Uh, if you start at one end, and just go start counting how many times the shock cord has been, that's remaining has been stretched. That's once, twice, three, four. Each time I do it, I'm stretching it. Five, six, seven, eight, nine times. And this cord is like right at the end. Now, if you store it this way, this shock cord is going to lose its, its elasticity pretty darn quickly. So, it works best. You want to have the least number of, of uh, folds on a, on a given section. And you want the, least, the number to be way less than what we just counted. So what you do is there's two things you got to know. One is you fold it in half as close as you can first. On uh, the four, it's the one next to the little plastic. So there's halfway. Okay, this is the trick. After that, you fold them by twos. So I'm just going to pull those apart. And now each of these have been folded twice. Everything's, these have been folded once, these have been folded twice. Three. So that's all the, it's only three folds on those. Okay, now I've got three sections. 
So it doesn't really matter if I do one, two, but it's going to be uh, two, three, four. And this other one is two, three. So this will last a lot longer. The other thing I'm doing, which I'll show on the next poll, is I'm watching which way makes the pole shortest, fold the shortest distance. Okay, so halfway, two, and I notice I'm doing this, you don't, don't want to do it by like grabbing because if there's even a slight flex, it makes the joints hard. So you do it with your fingers just really lightly and they come apart more easily, even if there's just a little bit of dust and stuff in there, which this campsite has definitely done. Okay, so this, do this one just like before. Okay, now, here's where I have a choice. I could do the pole coming apart there, and that makes my whole pole set almost two inches longer. So instead, you watch what's going on, you do it that way, it made it no longer on this side, and it's actually shorter on that side. So with this one, there's actually sort of something you'll learn, which is this is the one of the short legs. The short legs don't go with the hub. Okay? So each tent is actually a little different on how you how you slice that. Okay, here we go again. Fold it in half. Then gently in twos. Here we got a couple of hubs that are gonna give us a choice. These things, that's one. There's our base length. Now, for this one, do I fold it here, which would make it half inch longer and then short, short, or do I fold it there, which doesn't make it longer at all? Well, obviously, that's the one I want. This one is going to be the same idea. Obviously, I don't want to pick that, so I pick that. And this is the shortest this pole set will get. Uh, that's kind of important because, uh, you know, everything's designed to sort of fit. You know, you, if you find yourself having a hard time fitting it in the bag, like it wants to poke out, uh, chances are it's because one of those poles was folded a little bit funny. Uh, I like to put the stakes in with the poles, probably because my wife and I split it and the actual weights of the products are poles, tent, and rainfly each weigh about a third. And so she gets to take a third plus the stakes. I take two thirds, less the stakes. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, let's call it a wrap.